and sisters. I want to bring some more words. Uh, this is going to be kind of the second part of a just brief two-part devotional from Romans chapter 8. Last time we looked at verses 18 through 30. Uh, this time I'm going to read from verses 31 to 39. Uh, let's pray together. Lord God, uh, as we look to your word again, we ask for grace. Come to us and enlighten our minds to understand, our hearts to receive, Father, the, the precious things of Jesus Christ. May we be built up, our faith strengthened, and our love increase, Lord God, for you. So uh, bless us to that end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verses 31 through 39 says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Last time we focused on the, the hope that we have, the hope of a, of a whole new world, which will be liberated and free from the effects of sin, no longer under the curse, and even the hope that we would receive new bodies uh, after the likeness of, of Christ in his uh, resurrection body. Wonder what, what a wonderful hope that is. As we think about all the glories of the age to come, perhaps the most wonderful thing of all is to think about how the, uh, we'll be at the center of God's love. God's love will be lavished upon us. And that's something that is true even now. We're reminded of that as we consider these words of Paul, this reminder that, that, that all of the sufferings of this present world can't possibly separate us from God's love for us in Christ Jesus. And we think, and we, we do well to remind ourselves why that is. It's because of what Jesus did for us. It's because of the fruit of his perfect suffering, obedience, his death, as well as his resurrection. And I think we're reminded that, of that as we think a little bit about these words uh, Paul's words about uh, the sufferings of this world not being able to separate us from the love of Christ, I think uh, likely calls to mind the old covenant and the curses that were threatened upon uh, the people of God uh, should they be faithful or, or unfaithful uh, to his, his law, should they break covenant. And so it speaks in... in uh, he speaks of tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and sword. All of those things, I think, call to mind some of the language of, of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And if you think about all that God threatened upon the people, if they were unfaithful to him, he also threatened a pestilence, sickness. It says in Deuteronomy 28, verses 21 and 22, the Lord will make the pestilence stick to you. This, that is, if you're unfaithful to me, if you turn away from me, if you turn from my commandments, if you uh, worship false gods, the Lord will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation, and fiery heat, and with drought, and with blight, and with mildew, they shall pursue you until you perish. Surely, uh, amidst a, a, a crisis like the COVID-19 crisis that's upon us, it would be tempting to feel like, am I cursed? 
Is God angry with me? Is God against me? And no doubt we believe that amidst God's purposes for allowing this present crisis, it surely is a judgment upon an unbelieving world, a sign of, of the greater judgment which is to come. And surely it has that good sanctifying, uh, a chastening purpose also for God's people. But what an encouragement to us we can remember. Paul reminds us that amidst the, the sufferings that we experience, we can be sure that we have not been separated from them by God's love. We can be sure that, that, that we are not condemned. And isn't that what Paul says in this text? He reminds us we can't possibly can be, be condemned. He asks the question, who can bring a charge against us? Who can come against us and condemn us? And he reminds us that, that, that God himself has offered up his own son. When, when, that, that's language speaking of the way that Jesus himself was given over uh, to the judgment that we deserve. Jesus was condemned in our place. And so the answer to the question, who can possibly bring a charge against us is no one because Christ was condemned in our place. And that's why we believe that even if in this world, as Christians, as those who belong to Christ, uh, even if we are experiencing the, the, the kind of sufferings which we read about, which were threatened upon uh, Israel's disobedience, even if we are afflicted with the COVID-19 virus and we suffer and die from it, even that cannot separate us from God's love for us in Christ. We can be suffering with all of these kinds of things and know that for us, we are right at the center of God's love. His love has been lavished upon us. And as we think back to those words of verse 18, I ended with these uh, last time, and, and uh, that, that, that promise that, that the, the sufferings of this present age can't possibly, or can't, or, or can't even be compared with the glories that await us, of all of those glories, of all the, the blessings that God has in store for us. Think about how great it is that his, his love will just be poured out upon us. We'll experience the fullness of his love. That love is upon us even now. And think of it this way. If the present sufferings can't even be compared with the glories that await us, then no matter how bad this crisis gets, the greater the suffering, that only reminds us how infinitely greater still are, are we to uh, are, are those those glories that await us, God's love lavished upon us. Praise God for that. May that encourage us uh, again to bear up under the trial in which we find ourselves. Let's pray again. Lord, we bless you and praise you. Your love endures forever and ever. It, it, it rises up to the heavens. It is so great to us in Christ. And we pray that you would strengthen us, Lord God, by your word. Help us again to fix our eyes upon Christ. Help us, Lord God, not to waver in faith. Help us to hold fast to these precious promises, your truth. And so, Lord, may our faith be strengthened and our love for you increase at this time. For the glory of your great name, we ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen.